welcome to Teacher Tech. I am Brian, and we're going to be going through some pretty cool stuff today. So uh, I was in a Zoom conference meeting, and one of my colleagues, who's an intervention specialist as well as I, had asked me to make a video breaking down how to get Google Docs to be read aloud to our students and how to make fillable or interactive Google Docs when giving a test or a quiz while we're doing this distance learning. So I have an example question here called a force is, and then I have it set up with only three options. Obviously you can make four, but for the sake of this video, I'm using a form of what would have been considered maybe a modification. So with this here, if we go to another URL section and you are using Google Chrome, I highly recommend you get the app called ReadWrite. It's a Chrome extension and it works great. So if you click on the first link here, it'll take you to the Google Chrome store. It is a free add-on, so if you click here and add to Chrome, you can add the extension. So what it's doing right now is it's downloading it, and you'll know it's downloaded once it appears up here in the upper right with your extensions. The other extension I have up here is an ad blocker, but that's to prevent pop-ups and viruses. So now that it's downloaded, we can get rid of it, on that URL and go back to our Google Doc. As you can see, it's still up there. Now I'm gonna refresh the page because this hadn't had read write on it before. Don't know if that's gonna help us here or not, but it might. So if I click on the read write app, it's gonna generate this little drop down extension. Now if you aren't getting this, because I've already previously had this on my computer, if you two finger click, you can change your settings to be all sites, when you click on extensions or on Google Docs. Doesn't really matter which one you pick, it's your preference. I'm keeping it on all sites because that means it'll work on almost any website, which is awesome. Now, remember, this is going to help your students, not necessarily you as much, but it's a still a good way to practice with how your students need help. So if you go ahead and click on this downward drop here, it's going to prompt you to sign into your Google account, which is fine, it just needs to associate with the Google Chrome extension app. I have all my passwords saved, so it's easy to go in. Now, if you go back, you'll notice that your extension is here, and it's now opened all these tabs. Now, when you first download it, it gives you a free 30-day trial left of the premium features. So what this means now is that if I were to highlight this and press play, it's going to read it out loud for us. One, A forces, A, only a push B, the ability to keep moving C, a push or pull. That's just an example of how this works. Students can press the play and pause button to can have it continuously read to them. So that is a great benefit for those of you who need students to have their test read out loud to them and you currently can't be there to do that. Now a couple other things is how do we want our students to select their answers here? So let's get a couple things straightened out. We know that when we type up our test we're not typing it normally to have our students answer it digitally. Most of it's for a physical paper copy. So what we can do here is, is a couple of options. So right now I'm just going to copy this real quick so that I have it. So one way is, let's say the answer, which is a push or pull, because that's what a force is, the students could go through and bold which answer they think is correct, and that could be one way of how they answer it if, they're, if you are crunched for time and don't have really enough time to make a different version of this. Or the students could highlight their correct answer, and that's another quick way to push something out and have your students respond to it just ask them in your description to be like, hey guys, please bold which answer you think is correct, or please highlight which answer you think is correct. Now there's the other way, which is kind of like how we did in a previous video with a fillable Google Doc, which I'm gonna show you real quick how to make here because it is very quick and simple. So if you hit insert table, and trust me here, you're gonna wanna go with a two by two table for a total of four slots. Now. With the total of four slots, the first thing we're going to do is highlight the bottom one and highlight the bottom two. 
We are now going to two finger click or right click, depending on if you are on a trackpad or keyboard, and you are going to click merge cells. Now that we've merged those cells, this is turned into one long extension, and you'll see why we did this here in a minute. The other thing we're going to do is to pinch this one and slide it over a little bit. Now what we've done here is we've created a slot for the students to answer their question, to us give us their question, and to have the answer, possible answers to the question down below. So all I'm going to do is copy my beginning part, which is going to fit nicely in there, and I'm going to copy my options down below. So now that it's all filled in in here, let's go through because my students don't like those boxes. So what we have to end up doing is making all those boxes go away. So you want to start with the question box and then the option box. Now remember to do this, you have to click on the cell, the upward box, and then the outside layering, and then just change it to white. And then the last one you want to do is where the students would input their answer because it's going to continuously mess with all the boxes. So now we've created a fillable slot here for students to put in their answer. Now remember, I like to bold and change the font color so that when it is answered, it really does stick out to me. So that's an option there. But now that we've made the first one, we've now created a template. So if you were to highlight this whole box and copy it, this segment here, and we paste it back in, we have now created a duplicate of our chart. So let's say down below here. So now let's grab our second question, right? Because on most Google Docs or tests and quizzes, you're going to have a second option on the table here. So what you're going to do is you are going to highlight and copy. And you can literally just go into this new copy that you've had and paste it in. And what this does is it really helps speed up your pace for what you have done thus far. And then you can just delete it. And now you've created two questions with it being able to be filled in. So that will do it for this video. I'm going to put a link down here that will be available for you guys to uh, just be able to copy this blank template. Actually, I'll do that right now for you guys so you can see what that will look like. So I'll put a question mark in here, here, and there. And I will delete the rest of the stuff in here so that there's nothing else to be confused over. So what you'll be able to do then is just highlight this box, copy it, and then go to your Google Doc and paste it in there and copy and paste your question your possible answers, and then you can just delete the question mark. That way you just can see where things are filled. So this has been a teacher tech video. I hope this has been helpful. And please remember if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, to leave them in the comments. And if you need any help or ideas, don't be afraid to share. This video was made out of a request from one of my colleagues. So you know, let's keep on asking questions and helping each other. Have a great day.